Next topic would be OPS concepts. Okay, I'll just show you in a Okay, so to understand an OPS concept, you need to know about what, what, what is class, what is an object, what is encapsulation, what is an inheritance, what is abstraction. Okay, so these are all the things that you need to understand. Now, if I talk, if I tell you about what is a class or what is an object. Okay, so class is nothing but it's a blueprint for creating an object. Okay, so let me give you some small examples. So class will help you in identifying the things. Okay, let me show you by giving some small example. Okay, so object is nothing but it is a real world entity which exists in a real world. So what all comes under objects? Let's say you'll be having monkey or car or book, pen, a person name, watch, keyboard, mouse, monitor, whatever the things that is existing in a real world comes under object. Okay, so now object is nothing but it's a real world entity which is existing in a real world with a physical presence. It might be a living thing or it can also be a non-living thing. Okay, so what are all those things that come into the picture like monkey, car, book, pen, whatever that comes into your mind. Okay, so what is a class? Okay, so class is nothing but we classify the objects by grouping them. Okay, so we can group them according to their characteristics. So classes are the basic structure, or you can say that it's a blueprint or a template from where objects are created. Okay, so these structures define all the properties and behavior of a particular object. So now let me show you what will be the object and what is a class. Okay, now we have a car here. So what's a car? This car will be a class. As I told you that class is something which is a basic template or a blueprint, right? So from this car itself, you, you, what are the things that you'll have? Different kinds of Ford, BMW, Lamborghini, or whatever nano car or whatever that comes into your mind. Okay, so these for a Ford car, BMW car, nano car, all of these comes under the objects. Okay. So what is a class? Class is just a blueprint or a template, which helps in grouping them according to their characteristics. Okay. So classes are the basic structures, which is a template where the objects are created. It helps in defining their properties and behavior. So if you have a Ford, Podcast. You'll be having their uh, different functionalities of it. If it's a BMW, you'll have some different kind of uh, things that you need to validate. Is like, uh, what is the mileage? What are the features that we have in a nano car? Okay. The what is the basic template? The basic template is you'll be having engine. You'll be having the mileage. You'll be having the steering. Okay. So this is the basic structure. But additional features comes under the objects. Clear? Now let me give you some small another example. You can take another example as phone. Here I'll be writing phone. 
So in the phone, what are the different kinds of phones? Samsung is one, uh, and then Apple phone is one, and whatever things that comes into your mind, Vivo, Nokia, Oppo. So all of these are objects, and phone is a class. Clear? Okay, so what's the first thing that we need to understand? So first we need to create the class and then we have to create a object of the particular class. Correct, so now we have create a, created a class called as car and then only we have created the objects for it, right? So class is said to be a logical entity whereas object is said to be a real world entity, okay? Now what's an object? It's an instance of class, okay, with the real objects. So now, uh, let me uh, show you one example. If you take, uh, if you are taking now object as your mobile phone, okay. So what's the physical appearance of that object? It will contain size. It will have the color, or the screen type, or the model, right? It means all of the size, color, screen type, and model of a phone is telling you that that is the data or attribute or properties or the characteristics of the mobile. Okay. So what is data generally? So generally the data is something which tells you how the object looks like. If I talk about mobile phone, okay, what is the purpose? What is the behavior? Okay, so behavior is nothing but like making call, playing games, what's the working style of it, listening to the music, Okay, all of this comes under the behavior. Okay, so what are the properties or characteristics? The size, color, screen type, model, what is the model of it all comes under the characteristics. Okay. Now, so there are some different kinds of oops. So all the concepts that comes under oops are nothing bad. You'll have inheritance, abstraction, encapsulation, see, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, method overloading, overheading, so all of this, okay? Now, so tell you this, you have, uh, you have to know what is an abstraction. What is an abstraction according to you? Abstraction is nothing but enables us to focus on some essential things. Okay, what do you mean by focusing on essential things and ignoring the non-essential things? Okay, abstraction name itself is telling you that it is it focus on some important things and ignore some things which are not required. Give me a minute, I'll just... Okay, so now what is an abstraction? Enables you to focus on some essential things and ignore the non-essential things which are not required to you. Okay, so in OOPS, what we generally do, we'll create objects and we'll be using the particular objects, right? And you don't have to know about the details of and usage of their implementation. Okay, so now what usually happens is we can hide some unnecessary data from the user and expose only the data that is useful for the user. See, if you're, uh, uh, let's say that you have an application where you're able to figure out everything, what the company is doing, that is not the right scenario, right? So what does the banks also do? It will give you some functionalities implementation where you, you are able to see and it will ignore all the things like backend stuff, uh, showing what is happening in the backend, like how you are able to get your loan, and uh, how, uh, on what basis it is fetching your balance and all, okay? It is not required to. And also let me give you a smaller example. Let's say that you have your mobile phone, okay? So in the mobile phone, the user will not be knowing what, the, what is underlying the technology, 
that makes mobile communication possible correct and what kind of transmission media that they are using oh uh, and what uh, what is the software that they have designed for what is the language of, of the, the software they are using in the mobile phones right so it happens similarly in the case of car driving or uh, four wheelers or in or two wheelers okay what happens is the person who is running the bike or the car just needs needs to know about the parts only few parts like engine what's the battery and what's the electrical equipment right the user should know how to drive and it does not require any knowledge of every detail about the part correct does he really need how the engine is going on or how the shock absorbers are working and all it is not required to him so he is just focusing on the essential thing which is required to him this by uh, giving some accelerator way to give clutch way he are he is supposed to give gears way he is supposed to use the brakes okay so that these are the essential thing that is required for a user what are the non essential things how is the engine working uh, and how is the battery uh, how is the mileage working and some electrical equipment how the air regarding the airbags and all okay all of this stuff is not required for the user okay so that is said to be an abstraction hope you are clear with what is an abstraction now we also have something called as an encapsulation and in the abstraction we have abstract classes also so the point that you need to remember is abstract class has only the definition where you don't have any implementation okay so abstraction it can be able to achieve using the abstract classes and only the interface okay now let's come to encapsulation so what's an encapsulation it is a mechanism where it will bind the variable and a method inside it that is said to be an encapsulation okay let's say that you have a capsule okay so the capsule which has a several medicines okay so if we take a class we are writing some variables and method inside the class so that is said to be the class is binding them to the cathode okay so what will be the examples the class itself will be the example see now let me show you so what's this addition of matrix using array is a class right and these are the variables and these are the values so which means you are we are saying that the variables and the combination of methods okay that is said to be present inside the class is something that is telling you that the class has been binding them together so you can say that the class is an example of encapsulation we can usually also say that it is a processing of wrapping the code and the data together okay so now you might have a doubt on what makes the benefit of it okay so it definitely helps you in hiding your information i'll just show you how they hide, hide the information in java okay but it also helps you in reducing your code reducing the maintenance and help you in improving your program reliability okay so just think of a situation where you have a software okay so the software of your mobile phone is being changed by the company software is only changed okay let's say that you are using your uh, apple phone okay so the software inside the apple has been changed by whom by the apple company itself okay but the interface is same okay so the though the software may have different features now and it may move little faster but you don't depend on the internal parts of your mobile phone to interact with it right this is the power of encapsulation so the internal details of the objects will be hidden to you so that the underlying implementation can change without causing any problem clear so this is called as an encapsulation now we have some another thing that you need to focus upon is polymorphism okay so what is polymorphism so the word polymorphism uh, came from the greek word okay so poly means many forms means forms okay poly means many morph means forms so polymorphism is telling you that we have many forms okay which helps you in representing the ability on assuming the several different forms okay which is a future the polymorphism is a future that has only one interface to be used for the class and also for the action okay so let me give you some real time examples so that it will be easier for you to understand now let's say Uh, that there is a single button of your mobile phone where the same same button is help uh, is helping you to dial a number okay or sending a message or even taking a picture 
which means there is only a single button which is allowing you to dial to a particular friend or your relative or sending a text message or uh, inserting a picture or taking a photograph okay so all of these are getting done with a single button okay so this is called as a polymorphism which means it is playing a important role in allowing the objects with the different internal structures okay so let me give you some small example okay i'll just show you with the data and method also okay so now i had a class okay so just take notice now that you have a class okay so what's a class let's say shape is a class and in shape what are the methods that you will be having to get some certain shape you will be using some methods so drawing some methods so when shape is a class so the uh, objects also should be under this right so now here you can say that this circle object correct and here you can say it is a square object and here you can say that's a rectangle or triangle object okay so what is happening in this object so all of these objects are using the same method what's the method which is called as draw okay so these are the methods so here if you observe what is the point that you are understanding shape here is telling you that it is a class correct so when shape is a class what is this draw so draw is a method only one thing has been used for multiple purpose okay objects what are the objects circle square rectangle are the objects that are present okay now you need to understand what is an inheritance we are done with the polymorphism we have inheritance so what is an inheritance inheritance is the future of oops concepts okay so now here you will be having parent class base class child class sub class and all of this okay so what do you mean by inheritance it is a process of creating a new class from a previously defined class so this is an example for polymorphism okay so now okay i'll just give you a small example let's say you have a parent right you will be having your mom and dad so th those are parent classes and you your brother comes under the sub class okay so the sub class or the derived class so you have this different kinds of words sub class derived class parent class base class okay all of this okay so inheritance is a process of creating a new class from a predefined class which means now you are the people who are just born from the predefined class Who are from? Who are your father and mother? Okay. So now, so you also need to know that the inheritance is a easy relationship which happens between the superclass and subclass. It's a parent class.
Okay, so this parent class is also called as a base class or the super class. So similarly, child class is also called as subclass or the derived class. So why it is called as a derived class? Because this will have been derived by your parents. Okay, which means derived from the parent class. Okay. So now what did you understand as far as uh, here, if you wanted to understand what are the advantages, then you can say that there is a code reusability. Okay, I'll just when I uh, explain this with the examples, then it will be easier for you to understand. Okay. So now you need to understand that there are different kinds of inheritance. So what are the different kinds of inheritance? Single level inheritance, multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance, hybrid inheritance, and hierarchical inheritance. So what does all of these inheritances do? Okay. So when, when we are talking about an inheritance, so single inheritance is telling you that only single parent and single class. Multi-level inheritance will tell you that you have uh, two classes as parent, one parent, a subclass, something like that. Okay, hierarchical inheritance and hybrid inheritance. So multi-level inheritance, uh, let me show you with some uh, examples what it will be easier. So this is called as a single inheritance because only one parent class and only one child class. Okay, so if it is a multi-level inheritance, so if it is a multi-level inheritance, what happens? Your grandparent, your parent, and you. Okay, this is said to be multi-level inheritance. Okay, so this class is said to be a parent class. Or a super class, parent or super class. Now here, if you observe, this is an intermediate class. So you will be an intermediate class because you're acting as a mediator for both of them. Okay, and what is this? This is a child class. Okay, so what do you mean by multi-level? Because you have different levels. So, now, your grandma will be your super class. Why? Because she is the, uh, she is acting as a parent for your mother and acting as a nani to you, which means she is a super class because she is able to access both of the classes. Now, if I'm talking about intermediate class, who's your mama? Okay, she'll be able to access the class only of you. Clear? And then the other child class. Now, this is a multi level inheritance, which means it shows the heirs of your family. Okay, that is said to be a single level inheritance. Now, when I talk about hierarchical inheritance, so multiple inheritance does not work. I'll just tell you why. So let's say here you have class A, which is a parent class. And here you have class, which is class B, and which is class C. Okay, so now, is this possible that you are, are trying to send your properties on or inheritance to your parents? No, right? Because you are the one who will be getting their behavior or the properties or the genes from your parents. Does the child get the in inheritance uh, in uh, properties from the child parent? No, right? So the child will get properties of their parents that comes under the hierarchical inheritance. So what is hybrid inheritance? Hybrid is inheritance is nothing but it is a combination of Class A, Class B, Class C, and Class D. I'll just show you on how. Because it is a combination of single inheritance and a hierarchical inheritance. See, let's say this is a child class A. Okay, let me combine both of them. This is class A. Okay, and this is class B. And you have class C and class D. 
this d let's say this class c and class d are brothers and sisters or two brothers two sisters are siblings okay so the class b what what is class b parent class for so what for class c and class d at the same time it also acts as a child class for whom for class a okay got it so class a class b comes under the single inheritance why because only single parent single child comes under single inheritance and one parent with two child is nothing but the combination of hierarchical so the combination of single level inheritance and hierarchical inheritance gives you the hybrid inheritance but it's a, it's a hybrid inheritance. and we have multiple inheritance which i told you right so we'll be having class a this is class b and then you have something called class a class c okay so you cannot derive anything from your child to parent no it is not possible right so everything that comes to you will be from your upper generation or from your parents or from your grandparents but your uh, you'll your grandparents will not get the properties of your grandchildren right that is why multiple inheritance is not possible okay so to support this concept wherever you have the advantage definitely you'll have a disadvantage right so when you have a disadvantage again there will be a new concept that is raised so for this multiple inheritance this is not supported in java so this can be supported by using the interface concept only okay hope you are clear with the inheritance concepts oops concepts okay now let me show you this so encapsulation hiding and implementation okay so there is something which is called as public private protected and default okay these are the access modifiers okay see now in a program where we are writing we are always writing public static void main so which means anyone can use it okay when it if it is public everyone can use it. if it is private then only uh, let me give you some small example let's say that you are in a project within the organization okay if you are public you can use it anywhere within the organization outside the organization okay uh, within the organization comes on the public so let's say that you have private static void main okay in the private what happens is it, it is accessible but only to you within the project but Uh, for the protected it is not even possible it, it is only for some only dedicated people okay that is protected so if public private protected three of them are not given then it comes under the default so these are the access modifiers and then the getters are setters are used for just accessing the values okay so encapsulation classes that use encapsulation to predict your data and behavior which we saw okay so see this is the ability of an object to in the in the different kinds of forms okay so these are the having the multiple methods with the same name but with the different parameters is said to be an overloading and what is an overriding uh, defining the methods in a subclass okay if you observe you, you are able to see this interface so what is an interface interface name is flight okay what is a method method name is a fly okay so there is a class bat and there is a class bird where it is getting inherited from it is inherited from flight so why are we using this implements keyword when it is an interface we use a keyword called as implements okay so when it is a class we'll be using a class name called as an extends okay we'll be using extends and then you'll be give classing class name but when it is an interface you'll be using implements so here itself we can see the uh, example right because animal here the, this is a super class flight and then you are using bat and bird inside this okay as you already know what is an overloading it's just by changing the data type and changing the number of arguments okay but the class name will be same which is a signature and when we are talking about the method overriding which has the same method in the declared part i'll just show you by programs in the upcoming sessions okay so this is a abstract abstract classes okay hiding implementation details from the user so it it not only hides implementation details it says that the things which are not required for the user will not be able to show so these are the classes that cannot be instantiated so shape abstract class with a circle and rectangle subclasses so this is what you saw right 